let's look at how we can relate the primary trig ratio sine cos and tan to the unit circle. Remember a unit circle is a circle centered at the origin with the radius of one. Um, how we can relate the three, my, three primary trig ratios to this unit circle and then use that relationship to help graph what um, sine theta and cos theta actually are going to look like graphically. So we'll graph sine theta in yellow there, we'll graph, we'll graph cos theta in green down here. But first, let's remember the relationship between the primary trig ratios and the unit circle. So keep in mind, uh, <coughs> three, three primary trig ratios are sine, cos, and tan. And you know the word SOHCAHTOA tells you that sine of any angle is equal to its opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. And this was used for when you had right triangles where your reference angle was in here and the reference angle was less than 90. And that reference angle, we could label our opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So this is great when your reference angle is less than 90. But the unit circle can be used to look at the relationship between angles and the trig ratios. Um, when we have angles anywhere between 0 or 360, we could even use negative angles by rotating clockwise. Or we can do angles bigger than 360 um, just by continually rotating around this unit circle. So <clears throat> how are we going to use this unit circle to get a new relationship for the primary trig ratios? So first of all, remember that um, the initial arm always starts along the positive x-axis here. And then our terminal arm is going to rotate counterclockwise around. So we could draw our terminal arm is going to rotate some angle. We'll call that angle theta uh, from the initial arm in a counterclockwise direction. Now it's going to intersect the unit circle at some point x, y here. Now if I were to make my right triangle by connecting this back down to the x-axis, in this right triangle, this side, well let me just erase this here so you can better visualize this right triangle. This side has length x. Right, because to get to this point here, we would have had to travel x units that way and then y units this way. So this side has length y. And this side, the hypotenuse of the right triangle, uh, is the length from the middle of the circle to a point on the radius of the circle. So this, since it's a unit circle, the radius has a length of 1. So we can rewrite our primary trig ratios in terms of x and y. So sine theta would be equal to the opposite side, y, over the radius of 1. So sine theta is actually just equal to the y-coordinate. So it just tells you the distance between the x-axis and the point that intersects the unit circle. Cos theta is equal to adjacent, which is x, over the radius, which is 1 x divided by 1 is just x. So cosine actually just tells you the horizontal distance you are from the y-axis. So let's use these relationships so we know that sine theta equals 1 and cos theta equals x. Sine theta equals 1, cos theta equals x. So let's use that relationship to be able to actually figure out what the ratios are going to be at some key points um, as we rotate around this unit circle. So let me just get rid of all this. So <clears throat> We are going to start along the initial arm along the positive x-axis. So that is going to intersect the unit circle right here at the point 1, 0. And we're going to graph the ratio for sine as we rotate 360 degrees around this unit circle. So <clears throat> if we are going to find the ratio for sine theta. Remember, sine theta is always equal to y. So if I want sine of 0 degrees, I just need to look at the y-coordinate of where it intersects the unit circle when we've rotated 0 degrees from the initial arm. The y-coordinate is 0. So sine of 0 on the graph is going to start right here. It's going to have a sine ratio of 0. What if we want to do 
sine of 90 degrees. What if we rotate 90 degrees and now it's going to intersect the unit circle right here at the point 0, 1. Well, the y-coordinate of that point is 1, so sine of 90 is equal to 1. So when we've rotated 90 degrees, the sine ratio is now 1. And now that's the furthest we're ever going to get from the x-axis as we rotate around the unit circle. So the, the biggest the sine ratio is ever going to be is 1. So when we've rotated 90 degrees from the initial arm, the sine ratio is 1. What if we've rotated 180 degrees? We've rotated 180 degrees, it's now going to intersect the unit circle right here at the point negative 1, 0. Well, the y-coordinate of that point is 0, so sine of 180, we are back to 0. So the ratio, when we rotate 180 degrees, is back to 0. How about when we've rotated from the initial arm, when we rotate 270 degrees? So the terminal arm is now going to intersect the unit circle right here, at the point 0, negative 1. Now that has a y coordinate of negative 1. So sine of 270 is equal to negative 1. So 270 is at negative 1. And how about if we rotate all the way back around to the start? If we rotate 360 degrees, that's going to be coterminal with 0, which means we're back to the same point right here, 1, 0, which has a y coordinate of 0, so the ratio is back to 0. If we connect these points, I mean, we could find points in between these, maybe using our special triangles, um, you would figure out that it's actually going to form a curve like this. Points are going to be connected by this smooth curve. And this is what the graph of sine is going to look like. Now, and it's going to continue. Remember, this function is periodic. So <clears throat> this pattern of y values oscillating between 1 and negative 1 is going to continue. Um, every 360 degrees. And we could also rotate in the negative direction by rotating clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So that's what the graph of sine looks like. If we want to graph cosine, well remember cosine is just equal to the x-coordinate of every point that intersects the unit circle. So at 0, the x-coordinate is 1. So the cosine function is going to start up here at 1. When we rotate at 90 degrees, the x-coordinate is 0. So it's going to go down to 0. Rotated 180, the x-coordinate is negative 1. We've rotated 270, the x-coordinate is 0. And when we've rotated 360, we're coterminal back with 0 degrees, which means the x-coordinate is back to 1. So here's what this one looks like. Once again, smooth curve. This is what the cosine function is going to look like. And it's going to continue to oscillate between... 1 and negative 1 every 360 degrees because once again this is a periodic function. So those are what the graphs of sine and cosine look like relating it to the unit circle. And keep in mind we could have done this in radians. Um, we could have labeled this 0 radians pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 which is pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. We could have done this in radians uh, to get the same function. Alright, so that's it for that one.